It's been half a year since our Zerg player in this match last competed in a StarCraft 2 tournament. And according to his Twitter, the reason for that is pretty straightforward. He simply did not play the game. Now this particular series, this best of five, it was played during the playoffs of the European regionals of the ESL Masters of Winter. Meaning that he has already taken games and series off of some of the very best players from the European region. So apparently he still got it. Now I haven't seen this particular match yet, so I'm very excited to find out. Spotting right here in game number one on Raduset Station in the top right hand corner of the map. Playing with the red Zerg drones from Ukraine, we have one of my personal favorite Zergs. And he goes by the name of Bly. His opponent in the opposite corner, playing with the blue Protoss pieces. He's from the Netherlands, he's an absolute fan favorite, and he's been looking very strong as of late. We have none other than Harstam. Now, in my mind, Harstam is certainly the favorite going into this particular series. I'm thinking back of that cast that I did a couple of days ago between him and Raynor. And, I mean, he gave Raynor a very solid run for his money, and honestly, he should have won. Yeah, he should have won that series if he just, well, crossed his T's and dotted his I's ever so slightly better. Raynor obviously being one of the very best players in the world, and Bly being very rusty. You would imagine that, well, <laughs> Harstam is gonna get a landslide victory. That being said, in case you're unfamiliar, Bly is a man who throws all of the rules of StarCraft 2 out of the window, and that's why I'm such a fan of the men's playstyle. He must be an absolute disaster to play against, because he doesn't play the way that the other Zerg players play. Remember, uh, remember those strategies that Dark has been going for over the last couple of weeks with proxy hatcheries and delaying the opponent's nexus and just being as obnoxious as possible? Bly basically does that as his go-to build order, but then to an even bigger extent. He will double down on cheese and he will cheese better than basically any other Zerk out there. It's considered to be quite a weak playstyle at the absolute highest level, but Bly has been doing this stuff for like 13 years now, ever since the game came out. He's been playing the game differently. And maybe it's not, quote-unquote, the best build that you can go for, but since nobody really plays like him, it's also very difficult to get practice against that style. So I can imagine that Harstam, yeah, he is going to be playing a very cautious series, right? I don't think he's going to be skipping any sort of scouting. I don't think he's going to be... I, I, if I was him, I would probably go for a Void Ray first. I think a Void Ray first would be very clever, right? And that's probably also the reason why we have Radu Set Station in game number one. This is a map with a very long rush distance, and it makes it difficult to go for, for example, a proxy hatchery, right? Anyways, I've casted some series of Bly during the earlier stages of the ESL Masters Regionals, and I, I've already seen some of the games, so maybe it's a bit weird for me to go ahead and recast them. But I'm thinking especially of the series that Bly played versus Mana, and there's a series that he played against E-Laser as well. The man literally went for a proxy Spinecrawler rush. Like, <laughs> okay, small spoiler, because maybe I'll end up casting that series again. It is, by the way, a Void Ray first here, but he literally went for a hatchery on the opponent's side of the map, then he cancelled the hatchery on, on, a little bit, on a little bit of residual creep, I guess. He decided to proxy a Spinecrawler. Like, builds that we don't normally see in StarCraft. It's just a little bit weird. Anyways, Harstam, is he gonna be able to see that this is a quick lair? Beautiful scouting right here from our Protoss player. He picks up on the lair, he picks up on, well, the lack of a third hatch, and on a map like this, that is definitely a little bit fishy, I would say. Yeah. Generally speaking, well, we do see two base openers quite a bit, right? Players like, for example, Serral have been messing around with quite a few two base openers. The thing is, Radusat Station just allows you such an easy base to take. Right, this, well, hatchery over here is super easy to acquire. This one is also pretty tucked away, actually, all things considered. So, this is usually a map where Zerg players will be aiming for four base economy as quickly as they possibly can. Bly apparently is satisfied with only two. And we'll have to see what he's going to be using this lair for. Gases are coming up. We're going four gas. Could this be a spire? Two base spire against, okay, well, well, no, we're rushing out a drop alert. Fair enough. That's... I, I would be very surprised if that's the re No, okay. I'd be very surprised if that's the reason why we decided to go for a lair. It's gonna be a Nidus network as well, together with a drop alert. So right from the get-go, this is a little bit weird. Generally speaking, both of these builds, they're not really used as an all-in very much anymore. And usually when we do see drop alerts, we're only gonna see drop alerts and we're not gonna see a Nidus, because in a way, the Nidus and the drop alert, they kind of fulfill the same role. 
Now, there is a Void Ray out, but it's been hunting overlords on the right side of the map, and at this point, it's not going to be available at home to prevent this very slow drop alert from just flying into the main base of the Protoss. They did increase the speed of it ever so slightly. <laughs> so right from the start, I love this. This is a slow drop alert, dropping off Zorklings, providing vision for a Nidus Worm that goes up in the main base of the Zork. Like, who does that? I, have, I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. That is, there's overlap in these strategies, but when you think about it, it makes sense, because normally, well, a couple zealots are maybe gonna be pulled to like surround, for example, like there's no zealots in this game, right? But um, maybe the probes, right? They'd be pulled to like, you can use the zerklings to surround the Nidus Worm, and then uh, obviously it's very hard to actually shut it down. The queens now pop out early as well, so they can actually be used to transfuse the Nidus Worm back up to full as well. We have a follow-up Nidus Worm and Swarm Host as well. Somehow, some way, I have entirely missed the Swarm Host transition. Look at this. What what are we watching right now? Nobody plays this way. Popping the queen back into the worm here as well to save her. That means that the Void Ray needs to retarget, but so far, Harstom's not doing so. 15 probes have already gone down. <laughs> it's gotta be a disaster to play against, no? Yeah, Harstom going for a Phoenix transition. I don't know if I love that part. Now, even at this point, though, if Harstom manages to hold on, it's a playable situation-ish. It's just that these Swarm Hosts, yeah, they don't do a lot of consistent damage, but they're gonna be able to do a lot of damage over time. Every time there's a Locust Wave available, I believe we're gonna see them activate. Okay, Harstam actually picks up the one... I guess the, the, the... yeah, Phoenixes can kill the Locust. That's kinda neat. Stargates at this point are unpowered. There's a new pylon coming up over here, but I don't think it's in range of that Norden Stargate. No, it's not. Third Hatchery in the meantime on the other side of the map. Zerkling, okay, made its way as well to watch that third, it seems like, and now we're going for proxy spore crawlers in the main base. And you know what? It's actually brilliant. Yeah, these phoenixes don't have energy to pick up the drones in time. These spores, if they go up, it's gonna be pretty much impossible for Harstam to fly around with his phoenixes, and that's like 80% of his army supply at this point. You see what I mean? Playing against Bly, it's gotta be one of the worst experiences. Like, you can practice against that Serral-esque style, right? Like, the normal gameplay, all you want. But you may not be prepared for stuff like this. You know what the ultimate StarCraft II meta would be? If we have players like Serral starting to execute build orders like this. Because there is certainly room for optimization. There is 1,200, nearly 1,300 gas in the bank right here for Bly. Swarm host coming in, flying from the main base towards the third in basics. This makes no sense, but yet it does. GG is cold. Game number one goes in favor of Bly. Our second map for today is Elcyone. Now, Elcyone has a golden base right over here. And I was going to say, if, if we're going to, for example, see equilibrium throughout this series, there's about 0% chance that Bly is not going to be taking that high yield, rich base right at the very start. Now, this one is not quite as good because this is not a rich Vespian geyser, but there's no denying that this is still gonna be really nice and yeah, Hearthstone decides to check for it right from the start. So what exactly went wrong in that previous game for Hearthstone? Well, imagine if that Void Ray, right, that he had, maybe even one of the Phoenixes was already out. Imagine if that one was protecting that left side of the main base when the Drop Lord first came in. The Drop Lord would have died, the Nidus Worm would have been delayed, and that game would have looked so much better there for the Dutch Protals. So, yeah, Bly definitely does go for a couple coin flips, and obviously the problem for Protals is that in general, in the early game, you have, like, literally three units. You really rely on your building positioning and, yeah, just your, your greed, I guess, to shut it all down. And I guess maybe that's one of the reasons why we don't see players like, for example, Serral play those builds all too often, because they do require a bit of a coin flip. And if you don't, yeah, if, if you're not comfortable playing that, I mean, why do it, right, if it's not really necessary? Like, if you lose, like, one out of three games, accidentally, by default, yeah, it might not be quite optimal. Anyways, enough about game number one. This is a best of five, so Bly's gonna have to win three games, and winning three games like that would be very difficult. So he's gonna have to bring out some different strategies. 
This is gonna be a Stargate once again, I would imagine so. Yep, absolutely. All right, now this is always the question, right? Do you want to try and address this gold? Yes, it's very harassable, right? So it's pretty easy to actually be aggressive here. And I do love this probe movement, trying to deny one of those rich mineral fields, but... Do you want to address it as a Protoss player? It's very easy to overestimate the value of a golden base. I feel like I discuss that every single time we see a Zerg player taking their gold first, but it's really easy to get carried away trying to harass this. Yes, it's gonna give Zerg a boost, so right now it's gonna be fully saturated, but it's also, it's important not to overvalue the resources that Zerg gets from it, because ultimately it just basically gives you the same income as a regular blue base mineral, or a blue mineral base runner, but with less drones, right? So since there's only six mineral fields uh, compared to the conventional eight, you, you end up with the similar level of income just with four less workers. So right now, I mean, it should look pretty decent right here for Bly, but Bly also is forced to make quite a few links just to try and not die, I guess. Uh, getting two probes over here on the low ground is actually really nice. So it's important, I think, for Protoss to not overvalue the golden minerals here. One really nice advantage, though, from this position is that you can start spreading creep really easily. And I think a really stellar follow-up for Zerk on this map is to go for a Queen Walk. Just because you can connect your bases pretty easily and you can get, well, the creep all the way over at the third base of the Protoss player. One drone? Two drones? Ooh, lovely. Three drones! Wow! Alright, well, that makes up for losing the two probes to the Zerklings right there. And at this point, we are talking 37 workers right here for Protoss versus only 29 for the Zerk. Roachworn here at a very, very early time, all things considered. Considering also, though, that Bly is making drones, I don't think this is really going to be all-out aggression here. Hmm. He could. Problem is, yeah, if you're droning at this point, you're just not going to end up with enough stuff, right? Now, he's making five overlords here. Six overlords, even. That could be a little bit of that rustiness coming in. I mean, personally, when I don't play StarCraft 2 for like a week, I feel like I drop like 500 MMR. Now, obviously, uh, when Bly realized, wait a second, I'm actually doing pretty well in this tournament, he was grinding out tons of games. Like, uh, I saw him online basically the entire day, so he has been playing a lot of games during this particular tournament. Yeah, no, he can't he can't just be making he can't just be making that many overlords and not make use of it. So I think the plan is just to rush out as many roaches as possible. A lot of idle larva. We should really be spending those. He probably has the hatcheries on a separate control group, but here's the ravagers coming up. And now we're gonna be going for indeed some additional stuff. Okay. I think a Queen March makes a lot of sense. The creep threat not quite as good as it really could have been. A little bit of indecisiveness right here coming out of Bly. I think that's mostly because he was a bit late with those follow-up units of his. Maybe he's also thinking that Protoss is now going to be coming towards him. But this is an excellent situation here for Harstam if he manages to hold on. So, he's making loads and loads of oracles. Bly has actually given up on this. Yeah. So, this is one of the strengths of Bly. He's recognized, you know what, my cheese is not working out. I am not going to commit. He's still sort of committing. He's making it look like he's going very aggressively, but he is... Yeah, he's making it look like he's playing very aggressively, but he's just adding on uh, one spore here, and that's about it. Like, he made 13 drones just now. We do have queens ready to transfuse. Washington is like, yo, weren't you gonna come and play on the high ground? And now suddenly, you know what, with this stalker surround, that could be very painful. Queens moving forward as well. Harstam decides to take the bait. Bly was just fishing here, man. He wasn't actually intending on being aggressive anymore, but now he does fire up a large number of Zerklings. Eh... Oh, I imagine if he didn't make those 13 drones, then we would have had, like, an additional 26 Zerklings at this point. That would have been, uh, quite something. Okay. Lair is going to finish. Fourth base coming up here as well for the Zerk, but he doesn't even have enough drones yet for, well, just three base saturation. There's once again the infestation pit. It's funny how this is still, like, such an early infestation pit, right? If this was Serral, I would assume it would be a for a hive every single time, because Serral seems to be in love with the Viper as of late. I mean, a bit weird maybe against Protoss, but still a, a unit that provides a ton of value. 
Is this going to be swarm host once again? I think this is a, a really good situation actually for swarm hosts. It's a low eco game, at least for the Zerk. And it's uh, an easy way to put, well, you we just fired up 11 more drones, maybe not. It's an easy way to really build up that, uh, yeah, he's, like it's really uh, a good way to build up that army. If you don't have that many workers, if you're stuck at like kind of like 50 to 60 drones, I found that swarm hosts can oftentimes give you that comeback mechanic that you're looking for. Three hatcheries, by the way, on the production tab here, so we're really just dropping the minerals down. Okay. Oracles, at least one of them decided to activate their pulsar beam. I think we could have finished off a couple more. Ugh. That was not my favorite Oracle control ever, but still a lot of damage being done. I don't think Hearthstone is going to be happy about it, but ultimately that's, well, two Oracles in total going down in this game. 12 drones. The main problem, I guess, is that you could still be going up against the Zerk, who is going to go for some sort of delayed Queen March, and then all of those Oracles do matter. If the game goes on for long enough, it doesn't really yeah, impact the game that much. Please don't step onto creep that far, though, without an observer. Look at this. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. That creep strut is basically at the third base of the Protoss. Fourth base, though, coming up all the way at the bottom. Spire now building inside of the main base of Bly. It's an uncomfortable game here to play as Protoss, though. Because what exactly do you do? You've seen very limited amounts of information here from the Zerg. Are they just massing army? Could it be that he's actually sneaking out tons of drones? Because those bases are very spread out, right? So you don't actually know exactly how many drones there are in total. Now Swarm Hosts are coming as the Spire is finishing. Bingling Nest as well. Missile upgrade. Heh. Why? what are we doing? We have Roaches, Ravagers, Zorklings. We're going to have Banelings. Okay. Mutas, sure. What about the Swarm Host, though? Well, we're really doubling down on Swarm Hosts. I think these Zealots just saw them. Well, now the Oracles also see them. I was gonna say, there's a chance that maybe Harston wasn't paying attention to it. Now he definitely knows. Storm is gonna finish up, though. I think what Harston should do is just sit back, play this very cautiously, and try to go for that, like, Death Ball, right? Try to go for that Bulldozer. Maybe get rid of some of the creep over here, though. We can probably march around a little bit if we do have an observer in the mix, because that creep is starting to look mighty painful. Generally speaking, I think swarm hosts really lose their value when Protoss army supplies go up to about 100. So you can see the army supply right here for Protoss. It's currently at 76. Yeah, Fleet Beacon is coming up. I think if Hearthstone can just grow his army and shut down these units, it would be really cool now. Do you really expect Mutalisks, though? Like, I think the Swarmos are weird. I think the combination with Swarmos and Mutas is even weirder. But do you expect Mutas right now as a Protoss player? Because this is still a situation where the Mutas need to be respected, and I don't believe that Harstam even has any clue about them being a possibility. Now, nah, he did not see the Spire. We have eight of them available right now. Plus one flyer upgrades are coming up as well. If these units find an unprotected mineral line, and I think every single one of these mineral lines is currently unprotected, other than, I guess, the third. Yeah, there's a shield battery over here, but that's not really going to stop him. Okay, well, now he sees it. I actually don't know if you should have shown them to these zealots. I, I think, yeah, maybe Bly also assumed that he had been scouted already. But we're playing Muta Swarm Host now. Some of the strangest Zerg decisions that we will ever see in StarCraft 2. Anion's, or Anion Pulse Crystals right here coming up. That's plus two additional ranged on those Phoenixes. I think it's plus two. Anyways, it's additional ranged on the Phoenixes. Meaning that they are going to have a much easier time with Mutas. Another Stargate is, well, coming up. And maybe this was originally made to make some Tempest. Maybe a bunch of carriers, right? I don't think it's a bad choice right now to go into a round of Phoenixes as well just because the phoenixes are going to be incredibly handy. Also important to, to, to not get too carried away here with the phoenix numbers. Because when you do make too many phoenixes, it becomes a very messy game too. Yeah, so Harston playing this slow and steady. I think that's the right move. He's got a scary army now. Not quite maxed out yet, but he's about to warp in away from that. All right, Bly is setting up what seems to be a strange-looking surround over here, though. Do we have Burrow? Not quite the case. Oh, interesting. 
<laughs> that was weird. I think they were maybe supposed to fly over here. Yeah, we do have Burrow, so these units are just sort of flying around the map a little bit and getting some work done. And sometimes, I guess, they accidentally land big storms over here, though. Speaking of landing things, on top of that entire Zerg army. Another ship is coming up as well. Love that idea in this particular instance. Look at the production tab right here, though, for Harstum. Like, there's uh, two Archons, there's an Immortal, one Tempest, one Phoenix, one Mothership. This is a Protoss player who's trying to make the best of a very weird situation. And I think he's making all the right moves. But you can see that he is uh, he's, he's playing a bit of a head-scratcher of a game. Here come the Swarm Host once again. I think ultimately, though, this is leading into a game as well where Harstum is going to be marching through the center of the map. Now, you gotta be real careful that you don't lose your high Templar. <laughs> no, 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 no! Ay, 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 sorry, that is the highest note I've ever hit in a StarCraft cast. <sighs> 20 probes, by the way, in the meantime, have gone down as well. Mama ship is gonna be floating on over towards the left side of the map. Losing those Templar, it slows down any sort of aggression, right? I mean... With Templar, I think this is basically a winning attack. I did still have some more Templar apparently hiding, or at the very least to warp the new ones. They will have energy for storms, so that's nice. Mothership is going to be cloaking any structures here to protect it <laughs> from any sort of swarm host attacks. That's an interesting counter, but you know what? It actually makes a lot of sense. I don't know what the cooldown is of the Locust Wave and the Mothership's cloaking. I don't know how they line up, but there is a chance you would have it available every single time the Locusts are out. That would be a very curious counter, but a counter nonetheless. Somehow these guys have managed to escape from the wrath of that one Tempest. Mothership is now joined with the main force, but Harstum does not want to make any sloppy mistakes. Okay, he decides to play it safe and go for the gold base himself. He will be able to finish off all of those Swarmos right now. And despite all the strangeness, if we look right now at the army that our Protoss player has, and we compare it to that of the Zerg, yeah, it's not even really that remotely close anymore. 42 mainlings is nice, I guess, but we're going into an army that flies. There are Archons already out, and Archons are phenomenal against Ling Bane. Archons in the back, Archons in the front, there's the Cloaking Field being activated. There are indeed some Overseers nearby, there's the Time Warp as well. This looks like an army that can potentially win the game, but at the same time, well, there's still some counter-attack aggression being done as well. Hatchery over here is gonna end up going down. It looks to me like Harstum is holding on just fine at home. At worst, he may have to cancel that gold base of him. Ultras, by the way, are coming up, because that's what this game needed. <laughs> oh, big storms as well. Lovely uh, Morphin right there on those Archons after completing all of their storms. Here come the Immortals. Yeah, they're gonna be amazing against the Ultralisks. Beautiful targeting right there by Harstum. Trying to make his... Uh, yeah, trying to get a, a point on the board over here, right? Trying to make his stent on the opponent's side of the map. That's 22 drones going down. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with Bly, he also has a, uh, a little bit of that fantasy GG timing. Yeah. This game was very over, but he always likes to stick in until the very end. Okay, the score has been evened up and we find ourselves on a map hard lit. Bly has decided to not make any drones. Okay. It's gonna be a 12 pool. I wonder what Bly is thinking while he's playing these games. Like, how can I frustrate the Protoss even more? Because imagine if that previous game did go in favor of the Zerg, right? I mean... <sighs> there are about a thousand different ways that, that that game could have gone horribly wrong right there for Harstum. And I really do want to compliment him in the way that he's keeping his head cool, because that is not easily done. Okay, he's pretending to go for the third base first here. That means that Harstum is likely going to be blocking a potential natural expansion. The question is, is he gonna go into the main base? Because the drone is traveling across. This is a 12 pool with a proxy hatch. Okay, Harstum is gonna go into the main base. He wants to see if there is a standard gas geyser timing and a spawning pool as well. It turns out, well, there is a spawning pool. It's already finished up. Hello? Oh, 
All right, we're going for the hatchery. F okay, interesting. He decided to go for the hatchery first. I thought we would be spending the larva here first for sure, because you can only have three larva naturally generated like that. But I guess we're going to go for the proxy hatch into a bunch of zerklings. Now, they are going to be running across the map here momentarily. Forge is coming up. Look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's about 17 holes in this wall off. Maybe it's by design, though. One more structure over here, one more structure over there, would complete it all. Harsim is just double checking over here. Is there? Yep, there's a gap over there too. Fair enough. If handled correctly, this is a build that should not work for the Zerg. Problem is, it's very easy to accidentally slip up. Keep in mind that Bly can cancel the hatchery as well and create a massive amount of space. Yep, that's what he decides to do. I love it, so that means that these Zerglings end up running in. That also means that this is essentially the end for this push, though. Yeah. Well... <laughs> he did take his natural at home. He also did make the hatchery again on the other side of the map. I'm assuming the probe saw it? Yeah. If that would have been outside of the vision, maybe that would have been a problem, but I... Hmm. This is weird. So... Harsim decided to cancel that Photon Cannon here to try and go for the faster Nexus and to be able to afford an Adept here as well. Fair enough. What is this Proxy Hatch going to achieve, though? I guess it's buying time right here for these links? Because the Zealots are now preoccupied. Probes are forced to micro. Good control right here, though, by our Protoss. Three probes in total is still not going to justify going for a 12 pool. Especially since these links are now going to go down. Okay. This proxy hatch is not going to finish either, I don't think. Eh, maybe. I don't think it should. I think Bly should cancel it. He doesn't have a Roach Warren or anything like it, right? Okay. So ultimately, where are we? What are we doing? Where are we going? What do we do here? Are we all made up of a space dust? Like, what, what's going on? In the end, though, if you look at the supply count at the very least, it looks like a pretty even game to me. I think I prefer the position for Protals, mostly because they've got that solid work account here. They did get the Nexus. They got the quote-unquote free forge. Just a little bit awkward, right? It's all just a little bit strange. Playing a flexible game right now is not easy. But I think Harstam is going to be more than capable of doing it. Okay. It's going to be an Oracle here. I think that makes sense. Triple Hatch here on the follow-up as well, by the way, from Bly. So he's going to be able to, yeah, just build up the economy now. I do like the commitment right here with these uh, Adepts. Getting three drones would be huge. Can we maybe shade away? Yeah, okay, I'm going to try. Uh, probably not going to be able to get both of them out. Yeah, the thing is... Just having those Adepts on the other side of the map, it forces out Zerklings. So I think Bly ended up making like maybe eight or so in total more. So that means four less drones effectively. So it's four plus effectively three drones right there, at least in my mind. That is Zerk math. That's what we call Zerk math. He didn't actually kill seven drones, but he did. You know what I mean? It's just that some of the drones have been turned into other units. Oracle goes into the main base. Sporecrawler not prepared yet, so that's three additional drones going down. Unless these three drones here on the other side of the map, uh, <laughs> if these Zerklings can kill the base, which they won't, I think this is a, a good position here for Harstam. Okay. So Harstam's not really been able to play the game that he's had prepared for basically this entire series so far. Really just playing a flexible style instead. But I think this time around, this is not really a Zerk that can now transition into something that's really gonna need to be accounted for. So. Going into the blink upgrade together with, like, the forge, I think, would be a good choice. We'll have to see what he decides to do with the Twilight Council. No forge yet. Spire, by the way. Okay, there's the blink. Spire, by the way, I think is going to be the most likely choice here for Bly. He's already got the gases for it. Lair is done. It's a Hydra Den. What? <laughs> Wait, what? A Hydra Den? All right, Drop -a Lord coming up as well. Sorry, but like, what about the Hydra then? Um, Hydra Ling is pretty good against Blink Stalkers, I guess. 
But I don't think that's what Bly is thinking of. He doesn't really know that it's Blink Stalkers here. Although, obviously, that's a common follow-up. Are we gonna go Quick Lurker, then? No, we're just gonna actually upgrade Hydras. Okay. Well, here's the Zorkling drop in the main base. It's not accompanied with a Nidus network this time around. I think Harston will be pretty happy about that, because he actually doesn't have really that many units at all. 45 drones and Hydras are coming. That's a very small number of workers for the Zerg. Most Zerg build orders rely on getting 3 base saturation ASAP. So Zerg players will usually be trying to get 66 workers out as quickly as possible at the start of the game. That's basically the average Zerg build in any matchup. Try to get three bases saturated as quickly as possible. Make use of that larva mechanic, but no, that's not what we're doing here. Great scout right here by, uh, by Harstam, though, so he sees that there are barely any workers over at the third. That's a big tell. He also saw Hydra's building, which is a bit strange, but I think Blink Stalker can work out. Maybe we can go charge on the back of it if we need to, but I don't really know exactly if he needs it. I think just Blink Stalkers are probably going to be fine. I say it, against really large numbers of Hydras, it is going to be a bit tricky. These Hydras are a distraction, I was going to say. Don't blink after them, or at least not with your entire force. Oracles are going to end up going down, it looks like. Hydras over here are not really winning that fight. Stasis Ward over here is nice. Can we get a battery overcharge? We will. Arsene immediately targeting the unit as well that he wants to heal up. Okay, blinking the weakened stalkers as much as he can back towards the safety of that battery here in the back. And this is shut down pretty handily. I think anyways. Yeah. Not in love with that attack from Bly. Now he finds, uh, finds himself in a weird spot, because can you really drone behind it right now? I'm not convinced that that is the best strat. So he decides to instead double down on Hydra production. Fair enough. Harstam goes for a fourth Nexus. He's adding on four additional gateways as well, so we're gonna go up to eight. Charge is gonna finish here in... Uh, or sorry, the plus one uh, ground weapons is gonna finish here in just a sec. It's now done. And then charge on the back of it too. Okay. So now it's mass, mass Hydra Lisk. Now, I want to believe in the power of the Hydra, but the Hydra is considered to be one of the worst Zerg units in the game. It's just overall not considered to be that powerful. It deals a lot of damage, sure, and in the right situation, it can pack a punch, but they have very little hit points, and it's pretty easy for the Protoss player to get rid of them. Now, most of the time, Protosses would be thinking about, for example, Colossi. They would be thinking about, for example, Storm. Harstam instead is thinking about charge and more and more of the same basic units. That can certainly work with a bigger economy in particular, but it is a little bit risky. Yeah, here we go. Zerkling's coming in from the back. Hydra's moving in from the front. Blink, though, does allow, well, those stalkers to escape that surround. Lurker then on the back of this, too, but no Hive, as far as I know. No, so it's gonna be Lairtech Lurkers? Sounds like the name of a terrible band. I'm not gonna lie. Lairtech Lurker? Ugh. Yeah, so all of these fights look okay. Nine probes have gone down here. Battery overcharge is gonna be nice. But ultimately, I think what we're getting to is a Zerg player bleeding out. Like, I don't see how this Hydra army is gonna win the game. Yeah, he killed his opponent's fourth base, but he's still barely on two base economy himself. It is easy, though, for Harstam at this point to feel like he is in a lot of trouble. Because he's seen the worker count over at the third base, and he doesn't know that there are only 43 workers in total for this uh, for this Zerg. Look at Bly. Early transfer from the main base down to the third. Almost as if he's trying to sell the story that, hey, you should go and attack me right now because we're on even economy. You're stuck on just Stalker Zealot. I have lurkers coming. You should certainly go, uh, come and attack me right now. Clever play right there by Bly. But Harstam is not taking the bait, it seems. He sees Lurkers right now, though, and that's gotta be a... a little bit of a hard stop right here, right? Where you're like, oh god, is this... 
Have I mi mi been misreading this entirely? Like, is this going to be like an all-out hive attack? Not the case. Bly makes himself look really strong here, and this is still an army that certainly packs a punch. Oh, is he gonna be able to break through this? It'd be a bit of a nasty way of winning the game, but hey, it's all fair in a game of StarCraft. Love this zealot run by, by the way. Yeah, Hydra Zerkling armies are pretty horrible when it comes to dealing with zealots. Lurkers over here, I mean, we've seen Harstam confidently deal with lurkers in the past. Lurker drop in the main base as well, using that drop alert from earlier, trying to get some damage done. Five drones, by the way, have gone down in the meantime, and that's like, well, 10% of the entire economy that Bly has. Not quite. But we're never doing math in a video, okay? It's just a bad idea. Life commentary and math? Ugh. Any YouTuber's worst nightmare. Okay. So where are we going now, Bly? We're gonna add on drones at this point. Now we're going drones. I guess he didn't have gas anymore to make more lurkers. He's like, you know what? Zerklings aren't gonna do much. Yeah, so Har Harstam really is playing this calm and collectedly, though. He is not really forcing the issue. And Bly really wants Harstam to force the issue. But Harstam's not doing it. Doing zealot run buys, sure. Checking the opponent's economy, very nice. He knows there's no base over here. He knows that there's no base over there. He knows that there's no base over on the left either. We're 12 minutes in. This would be the point where the natural and the main base are going to be running low regardless. As long as you've got four bases yourself and you're going up against a relatively low-tech Zerg army, you don't have to be too aggressive. It's very tempting to go and march onto the creep and accidentally get surrounded, I guess, by a massive army. Here comes a lurker run by down towards the natural expansion of the Protoss. But Harstam marches his units back. Perfect moment. Lovely play. I really feel like Harstam has stepped it up as of late. I mean, I obviously haven't seen tons of his games, but... The games I have seen, they're good. Yeah. I think he's been practicing a lot. Wouldn't be surprised. There's a certain level of confidence in StarCraft that you only really get from playing a lot of games. And from studying the game a lot. I mean, obviously, players pretty much always do that at the professional level. Some of them will take breaks. I think Harstam overall has been pretty consistent over the years. But I feel like lately he's been playing more confidently than I have seen him play in the past. That might just be the games that I've seen, but I like the ones that I have seen at the very least. This is looking really stellar. I mean, it's a messy game, don't get me wrong. It's all scrappy, and maybe he could have won the game earlier, sure, but I think that's really the only direction that this series can go to right now. Um, I, I don't see how Bly is going to be able to obtain the victory here. Like, he can keep on trying to mess with his opponents. He can mix in Swarm Host, Mutas, whatever he needs. Photon Cannons are set up. Yeah, Harstam is pretty well protected against any anything along those lines. I, I don't think Harstam really needs to get too fancy, but just max out and go for an attack. And ultimately, I don't see a way that Bly is going to be able to hold that. The only real option I guess he would have is we do have a surround right now. Look at that, a Proto Sandwich! Okay, I was gonna say, the only way that Bly could maybe do an attack there is by moving his entire army towards the other side as Protoss is stepping onto creep. But he didn't get that chance. Beautiful surround right there by the Protoss. Next up, we find ourselves on the map site Delta. This would be a very early drone to send out. I was gonna say, that does not line up with 300 minerals at all. This one would line up. <laughs> 300 minerals. Uh, Bly once again going for the pretend they spend. Are we gonna send two drones towards the other side of the map? Is that really what we're doing? Um, this time around, it's not a 12 pool here. Okay, so I think it will be a proxy hatch. Although it will be a hatchery as well, first in a natural expansion. That's a weird way to get an 18 hatch down, but fair enough. We're gonna go hatch hatch, but Harstam is not gonna take it. Nah. He realized that something was fishy here, right? And this is oftentimes Bly's downfall. When players realize, okay, it's Bly I'm going up against, they will be playing the game differently than if their opponent is some anonymous Zerg player, right? 
So this was Harstam sending that probe before he had minerals to make a nexus on the low ground, just because he knew that there was a very good chance that there was at the yeah that there was gonna be something fishy going right, and getting your nexus blocked really really sucks. So the counter to a hatchery block is to send a probe like 150 minerals early down to the low ground, so you can well build the nexus there eventually. Uh, this is outside of the vision of Harstam, but there's no way that he's gonna lose track of a drone in his main base. Okay, he knows that there's still a drone out there, he noticed at the very least that it didn't leave, so it's gotta be out there somewhere. Yeah, it will be an adept first, second pylon is a little late, but fair enough, and he's already rallied towards the main base, he's now gonna confirm, okay, yep. Pesky little hatchery, right over here. Spotting pool in the meantime, of course, has finished. There's no roach warren or anything like that, so this is not gonna be proxy roaches. Probably the most scary variant for protals, but... Okay. One adept is gonna start working on this. Second adept will be coming out. Let's see. This is one of those situations where if you control everything correctly as protals, it should be A-OK. -okay. But it's also very easy to slip up. Are we gonna go Void Ray or Oracle? Yeah, Hatchery at this point is finished. I think Bly is purposely saving up Larva here. Uh, he wanted to go Oracle. He made an Oracle there for a second. Alright, it's gonna be a Void Ray here instead. I think both are... Yeah, Void Ray probably is a bit more comfortable, but it's also pricey. Queen is coming. Drone is coming! Really? Oh, I thought we were saving up Larva to make six links all at the same time. We're gonna go for a Spore Crawler, sure. <laughs> yeah, now you gotta start thinking, right? And that's every StarCraft player's worst nightmare when you're forced to think in a game. Is it the right call to target fire down that spore? I guess so. Should we be target firing down the creep tumor right now? I love, by the way, that shield battery. That's an excellent position on that one. Super critical. Queen ends up going down. Spore crawler is gonna get destroyed as well by the prismatic alignment. And ultimately, yeah, that drone is gonna try and hide, but she won't be able to. Lovely work right here, of course, by Harstam, right? Very easy, again, to slip up and have that spore crawler finish, and then suddenly you have Zerklings going to town over here on your workers. In the meantime, though, on the other side of the map, Lara has already finished. Bly is already playing uh, step A, B, C, and D all at the same He's going into a Nidus network. And I guess swarm hosts. So a proxy hatch into two base swarm host Nidus. An absolute classic. <laughs> Void Ray does not see this overlord. So, yeah, that could be a problem. Are we gonna go drop a lord once again? I don't think so, although we do have link speed. It's an option. Alright. Third base is gonna be coming here. So despite the fact that we do have a really, really quick... Nidus network, together with a infestation pit, we're not actually gonna be able to make use of it yet. Okay, yeah, Swarmos are indeed gonna be coming. That Overseer is super dead. But at the very least, it bought a bunch of time. That is 50-50 down the drain, I guess, by morphing it into an Overseer, though. Did Harsim just accidentally see the Yeah, he did at the very least see the potential for Swarm Host here. Flutter Council. Okay. Now, this is the moment where the third Nexus indeed is a critical one. Nidus Network is coming up all the way up north. And you know what? Oracle is heading oh, heading on over in that direction, but it stops barely short of that positioning. Harston right now is marching towards the other side of the map. He doesn't have Blink or anything like that yet, but he's looking at the amount of units available for the Zork. He's like, wait a second, there's basically nothing. That's because all the units, well, they're currently on the other side of the map. At the very least, it gets spotted early. Battery Overcharge already activated. Because of that, Bly decides to commit to the workers, but I really do like this attack right now, though. 
Yeah, there's barely anything available here for the Berserk player to defend with at home. It's just gonna be Swarm Host, I guess, together with some Speedlings. Still a little bit dis difficult as well, though, right? Because you don't really know exactly how much there is. Bit of a supply block right now for Bly. Yeah, and what seemed like a pretty random attack, because it wasn't lined up with any upgrades whatsoever. Void Ray ends up going down. Very painful one right here for the Zerk. Lovely play here from Harston. Decides to make the right call. Activating the Locust Wave over here is huge. Queen ends up going down. I think he just run away now. Yeah, excellent. Knight is in the main base, sure, but I think all of the Swarm Hosts have just used their Locust, or at the very least, the majority of them. We really shouldn't be here and fight them, but... Alright, fair enough. Just a little bit of base HP gone. Nidus Worm is gonna get shut down pretty easily. Look at these Stalkers hugging the Worm. Yeah. Alright, in the meantime, our little Void Ray decided to go after the Hatchery. Single-handedly, absolutely murdering it. And just a very small group of Stalkers here is creating almost like a soft contain on the Zerg player. Now Bly is finding himself stuck on two bases. Blink is going to finish up momentarily. And I guess all that Blink play over the last year or two, right, has really made Protoss players a lot more confident in the strength of the Stalker. So now Blink is done. Dark Templar, by the way, on the back it is. Okay, Harstam's starting to find his groove now. Apparently the best counter for Swarm Host is to attack the Zerg's natural. We can send a couple of Swarm Host over here, a couple Locusts, that is. There will not be much of a counter against DTs, I guess. I mean, there can be detection in this game pretty easily. Nine probes did end up going down, by the way, which is quite painful, but I just don't see enough stuff here at home to really deal with these stalkers. They really do hurt. Yeah. If we had a prism on the other side of the map to, like, warp in reinforcements, I think this would seal the deal. Honestly, this may just already seal the deal. Look at that. So this attack here has been ongoing for, like, yeah, the better part of the game. Excellent decision right there by the Protoss to move out before Blink was even remotely done. It is indeed Harstam who ends up winning a very chaotic series. 3-2-1 over Bly. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button down below. And if you really enjoyed it and you would like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. I usually try to upload anywhere between like five to seven times or so a week. I also have a second channel, that's youtube.com slash moreloco, where I post completed games that I have live streamed. There's a link to that one down below in the description of this video. For now though, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I hope to see you once again tomorrow for another video.